This video clip is some information about our textbook. You can see there on the right, that's the uh, publisher's image of the cover of the textbook. And the textbook for finite math is critical to your success. The book itself is titled Finite Mathematics, An Applied Approach, published by Wiley in 2011. The author is Michael Sullivan. 2011 seems a little bit old, but you know what? The math really hasn't changed any. Two plus two is still four. So I personally don't really see any reason to keep flopping the textbooks up to the newest edition if we don't need it. And in fact, the 10th edition will still work. You'll have a little page numbering irregularities, but you can even use that older one. Now, Wiley, the textbook publisher, has a, several different options. You can see them there, the rentals, semester-long uh, rentals, the own ebook version, loose leaf, hardback. The HCC uh, bookstore typically has the hard-covered version in both new and used. We've been using it for so long that there should be lots of used ones available, although why people want to get rid of their textbook for a course as interesting as finite math is beyond me. Um, there's also a student solution manual, which has got the problem worked out, not just the answer only. And then the final option, which is a really expensive one, textbook with the student solution manual all on a single hardcover. I do not repeat, do not require this student solution manual. If you want it, fine. If you don't, that's OK, too. Uh, Wiley, the textbook publisher, does also have a student companion site. There's two sets of things on it. TI-84 calculator manual organized by chapter of the textbook. Some pretty good information there, although I also provide that same information on the chapters that really are best used with the calculator. The textbook publisher also has Excel files. They're OK, but when we do the Excel work, I provide the needed files and I take the files that they may have and enhance them with some actual instructions and stuff rather than just the straight up numbers. So you probably just get marginal use out of the companion site, but it's there. Now, if we flip up the page XIII in our textbook, we'll see this flow chart. And this is how the textbook author sees the layout of the book. And if you look across there, you can see the 1, 6, 7, 9, and 11. Those are all the chapter numbers. And you can see that the author is basically saying you can start on any one of those five chapters and it doesn't matter. And it's because, except for chapter 10, where you require chunks out of two different vertical lines, there's really not much overlap in any of this. It's just a subject and then that part is covered and then we go to the next part of the subject and so forth. So I took that flow chart and reworked it and here's how we're going to do it. We're going to start with chapter six, which is on the financial calculations. And then we're going to go to the linear um, equation chunk, a little teeny time on one. Notice how much smaller one is than six. And then two, three, four. Chapter five, we're going to cover the material, but we're going to use all of it in Microsoft Excel rather than the way the textbook author presents it with the hand methods. We'll then switch to chapter 11 on logic. Uh, our last unit will be seven, eight, pick up what we recalled from three earlier and then finish chapter 10, which is the Markov chains and gaming theory. And you notice over there on the right then I have chapter nine, which is our statistics chapter, is X'd out. Harvard Community College has math 027, and 216 to cover statistics, so we don't need to cover it here. You take those four chapters, you put them into units, and here's what you get, just like the preceding page, really. The first unit will be uh, applying um, interest calculations to different kinds of financial in uh, instruments, sinking funds, mortgages, annuities, and it'll be about 20% of the total course time will be spent on, on that. The second unit is the linear equation one, which will include matrices, the linear programming techniques, the optimization methods, and that'll be about a third of the course will be in that set of chapters. The third one is just that logic chapter, number 11, 
uh, will construct uh, propositions, arguments, truth tables, logic circuits, and that'll be about 10% of the total course. And then the last third of the course, the other big chunk will be that seven, eight, and 10 chapters. And those are chapters on probability, including expected values, Markov chains, game theory, lots of really interesting stuff in that last one. So that last unit test will be what you would otherwise call the final, but the final is not, repeat, not comprehensive. Each of the tests are only on those chapters that are in the unit. And the Blackboard site is set up the same sort of way. So where are we going to start? We're going to start with the exponents and logarithms out of Appendix A3 so that we can do the finance chapter, chapter six. And then, as you can see there, that's what's coming up. Now, the good news, bad news about this is that each of those units stands pretty independent of one another, except for a little bit of that matrix work in chapters three, five, and 10. So if you don't like what we're up to at the moment, you're not getting it or you're just not interested in it, well, the good news is wait a couple weeks, slug your way through that part because when we go on to another topic, we'll never come, come back to that one that you weren't happy with. Bad news, of course, is let's say you're a finance major and go, oh, gosh, I wish we could spend the whole semester on chapter six calculations. And the bad news is, well, sorry, we're going on to something else in a couple of weeks. So how do you want to succeed in finite math? You've got to get the textbook, as we've mentioned. The learning center in the first floor, bottom left side of the library in the back is very handy. Of course, they're not going to be open when the semester starts. Maybe not all semester. We don't know yet. But they do offer remote assistance still. Uh, likewise, you can call me on campus, although obviously I'm not there either. And that phone number given just uh, turns it into a voice message and then sends it to me as a file on my email. So really, the email is the better way to go with this type of thing if you want to contact me outside the team meetings. You can see, like uh, most instructors' names, it's first initial, last name, truncated at an eight-character total. So the E is missing off of my actual name for my email at harford.edu. Should the campus open later in the semester, that'd be great. You can come and visit me at Darlington Hall or Edgewood Hall, Aberdeen Hall, Falston Hall, wherever I'm hanging out at the moment. We can meet face-to-face, -face, and that might help your success. But here's how I view some of this. You've got to attend class every time on time. Now, we're having Microsoft team meetings. That would be the class. It might mean the class is just strictly on Blackboard at that point. So attending means logging in, and picking up whatever you're supposed to be working on at the time. You do want to work problems. Math is one of these things where you just cannot succeed in any type of math course without doing the problems, without working problems. Now, most of the ones assigned, you'll notice, are odd-numbered problems. That's because those are the ones that have the answers in the back of the book. And then I take my quiz and test questions from the even-numbered ones. So if homework was number three, five, and seven, you can get a pretty good guess that a test question will be number four or number six. If you're working along and let's say I've got number seven, number 11, number 15 assigned and whip through seven, okay, 11 you have a little trouble with. So maybe before you go on to 15, maybe pick up number 13 and see if that helps. So working additional problems is always good. The next point about succeeding in finite math is if you've got a question, you've just got to ask it. So ask and ye shall receive, knock and the door will be opened unto the so you can do that during the class periods team just added a hand raising feature that wasn't there in the spring semester uh, you can start before or after class you can ask the questions you can send me the email or the telephone call but ask and, and uh, get those questions answered before they pile up into being something bigger that is harder to get going with and you want to keep up because the way the course moves around and changes, and there's all these grading activities, basically every week there'll be probably at least two of them that will earn you points. So you want to stay up with it. Take your study time in small little bites so that it has a chance of soaking into the brain. 
making a that study schedule and sticking to it and figuring that you need two or three hours of outside study for every hour of lecture time. Uh, in terms of lecture time, technically it's a three hour course, so we have two one and a half hour sessions. That's three hours per week. You're going to need somewhere between six and nine hours on top of that, or about a day and a half a week to stay up on a three credit hour course. That's true not only in finite math, but any course you're taking. 